Oh yeah, I got a good one for you today. Kappa treads. Yep, I got one going wall to wall, and I got one at the bottom that has an open ended return. I'm gonna show you how to put this baby on today. Let's go. What is up DIY Nation? Welcome back to you, Florida Channel, bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. Today we are going to be doing Kappa Tread. I would say this is a Home Depot product, but uh, I've seen these at different places, so well, I'm pretty sure you could buy these almost anywhere. You probably just can buy them online at Amazon since they're the everything store. They should have them, right? Anyway, I had a lot of questions about how to do a step when it's open-ended at the bottom. How do you put the risers together? How does that all go together, Z? What, can you help me out? I did a couple more videos on some other stairs, stairs covers you know like the one inch treads and the new stair or the stair tech but I want to make sure I covered all varieties as much as possible and I've also got a couple ideas that might help save you some money not necessarily some time but if you're willing to put in the work you can probably get your stairs done really really cheap that video will be coming soon but I got a lot of work to do before I get to that so let's not waste any time let's go jump inside and take a look and see what we have to work with and I'll show you how I install these according to manufacturer recommendations let's go All right, take a close look at this set of steps. You'll notice whoever built them used two two by sixes on the top two steps, but they used two by twelves on the bottom three steps. In case you're not familiar with lumber, that means the top two steps are only 11 inches deep, while the others are 11 and a quarter inches deep. That may be okay for carpet, but not for custom built steps. So, since I had my table saw already out, it made more sense to cut two quarter inch fur strips and nail them on the front of the two top stairs as opposed to cutting off the nose of the bottom three steps. What a pain that can be. Looking good. Next, I wanna check the overhang of the nosing on all of them. And it looks like we're at three quarters of an inch. Now, since I started at the bottom and since this bottom step does not go wall to wall, I want to take plenty of measurements, side to side, as well as front to back. I wanna make sure that my tread is sitting on top of the riser all the way around. With this baseboard being so small, I don't see any reason to try to scribe around it. It's just gonna be a whole lot easier to take it off, cut a little bit off of it for the perfect fit. After I figured out roughly about how wide each riser would be, I went outside and cut them roughly about an inch longer. Then I used the leftover scrap to cut up these three quarter inch wide shim blocks. The risers are about three eighths of an inch thick and I don't want to nail through the floating floor. So I will just double them up and nail them standing up on the riser. This speed square is one of the best tools for this job. It helps to make sure the risers are standing perfectly square. Once I got my block situation figured out, it was time to lock and load. I went ahead and doubled up the 3 8 shims and nailed them through the risers at the bottom, all the way across. Using a straight edge, check to see if the tread is cupped or bowed front to back. If it is cupped, you can use shims to build up the middle. You don't want a bouncy step later on. If your tread is bowed up in the middle, I usually remove it and run it through my table saw and rip it right in half. Don't forget your safety glasses. Then I reinstall them one at a time using glue and screws. This usually makes the tread lay pretty flat. Once I've determined the height of my riser, I need to figure out how big to cut my two pieces. I'll be putting two miters together to form a sharp corner on the bottom. You may need to cut your pieces a little bit long and then through trial and error, you can trim a little bit off the square side until the miters come together nice and tight. All right, okay, so we have six and a half in the house. I'm gonna go ahead and rip this riser down to six and a half. That way I can stick it in my miter saw and cut the miters. Some people like to cut their miters on the table saw. I don't understand that when you have a miter saw, I like to cut my miters on my miter saw. So that's what we're gonna do. And in order for it to be able to chop all the way down, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them to six and a half. So here we go. All 
And also I wanted to mention that after you cut these off, these are perfect for the little block that you need to put down on the stair uh, to run your riser down to, and then you can just nail it. it. All right, let's figure this out. See, now that I have my miter cut there, I can come from the short point to where I need it and I have a really nice straight miter. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my miter right now. See where we are. Nice, tall, straight, here we go. You guys know the deal on this stuff. We'll go ahead and put some CA glue on that and make that thing nice and crispy, huh? All right. All right, so I know you guys are probably thinking, Z, that's not the CA glue you've usually been using. But this stuff is pretty similar to that. So I've been trying to find something that was a little less expensive and this came like the other one with the, uh, you know, the spray and the glue all in one. I don't like to get it up close to the miter. Yeah, it'll squeeze out and you probably can just, you know, sand it down or whatever. But It'll squeeze up in there, so I try not to get it close to the edge up here. But shoot, that'll hold, huh? Just gotta make sure we put these things together right. Hmm, we're about out of that stuff. Might need to reload up on that. So let's make sure we, when we touch these, we ain't got it but about eight seconds, and then we're stuck. So I just need to make sure you're good before she dries up. I like that right there, that's looking good. So we'll count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boy, look at that, that's pretty crispy, huh? Y'all better get you some of that CA glue. Okay, and then remember from the inside, because we're hooking the end of that two by 12, to the wall it was 35 and a quarter, so here we go with there. Go in there. All right. To get these steps prepped, I need to fix a small dip. I used a straight edge and a tapered shim and checked it in three spots. Then I broke the shim off at that spot and used it at my table saw for a gauge to cut some long, thin shims. I glued the shims down and used plenty of glue under the shims. Once I smash the step down, it will spread out and fill in between my shims. Then it will be rock hard for full support and adhesion once cured. The steps come inside a cardboard box, a little bit bigger than the step. If you have a straight edge and a razor knife, you can cut them the depth of your treads and use them as templates for the perfect step. I took measurements from the outside of my riser to the wall and I cut my cardboard about a quarter of an inch short. Using my hot glue gun and a square piece of cardboard, I glued it down tight to the back of the corner and the side wall. This will help in case my wall is a little bit out of square. This edge right here is where we'll be nailing our nose piece on, so it needs to be flush with the side of the riser. This edge of the cardboard is where we will line up that piece. Take a look at the side of this tread. This part of the nose is going to be what butts up against the riser and will not allow you to push the tread all the way back. It is in line with the inside point of this miter. Back in the house, Double check your measurement from the outside of the riser to the wall. You're going to want to transfer that measurement from here to right here. The riser will not shove all the way back tight because of that nose. So if you put your cardboard flush on the back, you could end up with a tiny hole right here. So that's why I say go ahead and put it flush on the back and draw it out. But then pull that measurement I told you about to allow for that minor adjustment. Now if you don't have a table saw or you're not comfortable cutting freehanded, 
I have found that the best tool for this is a sliding miter saw. And if you don't have one of those, you probably can just go rent one. But I have also used a straight edge and a razor knife just to break the skin. And then I cut them with a jigsaw. Then I can just clean it up with my sanding block. Always dry fit your tread first. You don't want to put a bunch of glue down and then have to pull it back up and you would have a big mess. When installing these treads, the manufacturer requires that you use a urethane glue. Don't be stingy because that's what's going to be holding the step down the most. I only put a few nails to the back and those are hidden by the riser. I am not mad at that at all. Perfect fit. Next, it was time to measure for our side piece. And no, I don't mean my new girlfriend. Six and three sixteenths to the short is what we had in it. That's our guy. So we'll see how that works. With the nose piece cut to fit, it was time to put some glue on. I have found that the index finger applicator was the best method for this project. I put one nail in it and used tape to hold it tight and flush the rest of the way. And now that I think about it, I probably could have just used CA glue to glue it together first and just installed the whole step as one piece. Well, one step down, four more to go. The rest of the steps run wall to wall. They are installed exactly like the bottom one. There is just no return to install and they do not take as long. Installing these steps this way stops you from having to cut the nose off of every step. However, if your steps stick past the stair runner, you may have to cut some of the nose off of the 2x12 tread just to get it to fall back inside. Guys, I'll be honest, there is a lot that goes into making a YouTube video. I work for hours and hours only to realize that I still have several more hours to go. So if you are enjoying today's presentation or you are getting some type of value out of these tips, help me out by smashing the like button or you can gently tap it. I am not picky and I will accept either one as a token of your appreciation. Or you can just send me some Bitcoin. Just kidding. Anyway, if you guys have any questions or any ideas for future videos, leave them in the comments and make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you can be notified when I actually put those videos out. With all that out of the way, let's jump back into the video and check our progress. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's a quick tip. If you cut your riser on a slight bevel and a little bit longer than your actual measurement, then you can set it up against the wall and mark it and then just take a sanding block and sand it down to the angle that it needs to be. With it cut on a slight bevel, it makes it a lot easier to sand. There's not as much material. Well guys, we made it to the last step and we have one more riser to put in. Thank you to those who stuck around to the end and for those of you who didn't, you're not going to know how to put the stair nose on. Now when I first found out I was going to be doing this job, I wasn't sure if they actually made a stair nose, so I went and bought one from Floor & Decor. However, once I got to the job, I realized that Capitred actually makes a stair nose for this product. I just had to do a little bit of modification at the top so that I could get it to lip up on top of my LVP. Again, use plenty of glue because that's what's going to be holding it down the most with just a couple nails and then use a color coordinated putty to hide your nails. This will make sure that the stair nose is stuck so nobody goes slipping down the steps but also allows your floor to expand.
Well, there you have it, guys. That is how I install Kappa Tread Stair Tread covers. Hope that brought you guys some value and I hope you learned something today. I think I learned a couple things today too. Again, you want to make sure that with these things you use a urethane glue and try not to put as many nails in it as possible because those things, it is made of a, like a laminate on top, I believe. And when you hit it, if you ain't got one of those DeWalt Brad nailers like I have, it puts a tiny hole, it could blow chunks out and then you'll have to put putty over it and all that. Anyway, that's it for this one guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more videos like this. And for the YouTube algorithm, if you wouldn't like, hit the like button. Like button is very important. It is what sends my video out to other people who may not see it. If you guys like it, do me a favor and give it a like. I do hard work on these videos. All right, that's it for this one. See you guys on the next one. And don't forget, till next time, take care, stay safe. Peace.